Now we'll see that the second rule that we had for raised and lowered indices is uh, where we took row indices and raised them and column indices and lowered them. This law is going to be incompatible with law number three. Okay, so actually what we're going to do is we're going to take law number three as the, uh, the correct notation convention and we'll see what this implies for uh, the generalization of the second law of raising row indices and lowering column indices. So what we've done so far is correct, which is vector indices will have uh, will be raised, and the transformation matrices will have mu and nu in this form. Okay, and the resulting summation will also result in a vector which has a raised mu over here, uh, which is again a four vector index. So let's see where the conflict arises between law two and law three. So the conflict will actually arise uh, when we write down something like lambda transpose. Okay, so when we write down lambda transpose, now lambda has indices mu and nu, but now when I write down lambda transpose, what I need to do is reverse the indices. That is, if I take the ijth entry, so now I'm not going to use upper and lowered indices, but supposing I take the ijth entry of lambda transpose, this is going to correspond to lambda uh, ji. Okay, it's the jith entry of lambda. So now, if uh, we want to take lambda transpose and we want to find the ijth entry, so now let's replace them by Greek indices. And now let's apply our rule for raising and lowering indices. So if we raise um, the row index for lambda and we keep the column index lowered, on the right hand side we would have this. However for lambda transpose what we would like is a matching of the raised and lowered indices to the indices on the right hand side. Okay so that is raising and lowering of indices on the left hand side of this equation should match the raising and lowering on the right hand side. So if we do this, uh, what we would need is to keep the index mu lowered but raise the index nu. Okay, so this would be an upper index and this would be a lower index. However, on the left hand side of this equation, mu is actually a row index for lambda transpose and nu is a column index. Whereas on the right hand side, nu is a row index and mu is a column index. Okay, so the rule that we prefer is this rule, okay, which is that uh, for the transpose matrix, we match the uh, upper and lower indices not by whether it's a row or a column, but by comparing with the indices of lambda. Okay, so this is the preferred rule. So this overrides rule two for uh, something like lambda transpose. Okay, and now let's see what this implies for 
um, for the metric G and the indices of the metric G. So in matrix notation, we have the rule lambda transpose dot G dot lambda is G. And now let's put in indices. So lambda transpose, let's put in uh, just indices um, I and J. So let's write this as G I J. And over here we'd have lambda transpose I A G K L lambda L J okay, where I summed over the indices K and L. Now we'll drop the summation okay as is the Einstein summation can or actually let's drop the summation at the end so that it's it's clear what we're doing. So let's keep the summation over k and l and now let me raise and lower indices according to my rule okay so first let me replace all the indices by greek indices so let's write ij as mu nu let's write uh, lambda transpose as um, lambda transpose mu since i is the same as this i, which we replaced by mu, and we'll use an index rho over here. Um, actually, let's use an index alpha, and uh, this would be the same index alpha that shows up here. And let's use the second index of beta, and this would be lambda beta, and j uh, would be nu over here, where I have summed over alpha and beta. Okay, alpha beta goes from 0 to 3. And now let's raise and lower indices appropriately. So let's raise the indices and uh, lower the indices of lambda. So lambda, we should raise the first index, which is put the beta up and lower nu. And for lambda transpose, if we look at our rule, lambda transpose should have the first index lowered and the second index raised. So lambda transpose mu alpha. Okay. And then we have G alpha beta summation alpha beta is G mu nu. Okay. So now with this rule, uh, what we see is let's let's go to our rule of drop the summation or make it implicit. And the way we make it implicit is repeated indices are summed if you have a combination of a raised and a lowered index, okay, which are the same, which means that automatically there's a summation over new implied in this equation. So similarly over here, we have a raised alpha and a lowered alpha index. So we can drop the summation over alpha and make that implicit. And we have a raised beta and a lowered beta. So again, we can drop the sum over beta, all right? So when we do this, what we get is, um, uh, is this, lambda transpose mu alpha g alpha beta lambda beta nu is g mu nu. And now what you see is with this convention, the metric g, has two lowered indices. Okay, and this is the defining equation of the Lorentz group in index notation. So uh, now let's look at uh, another equation. So if we take the matrix G inverse, it should be true that G inverse dot G is uh, the identity matrix. Okay, and now we've defined G 
so let's let's first write things with indices without um, without uh, in in the standard matrix notation that is without using Greek letters. So the way we would write this is something like this: G inverse I K E K J sum over K. And uh, now uh, we'll switch over to Greek letters. So we'll write this the right hand side as delta mu nu. G K J we'll write as G uh, nu alpha and g inverse will be written as g inverse um, mu alpha now what we'd like is for the identity matrix to have one upper and one lower index and the reason why we'd like that is because if we think about the identity multiplying a vector, this should give back the same vector. And since the vector has an upper index, uh, the identity, which is written as a delta over here, we would like to write it in this form. Okay, where this is a row and this is a column uh, of the identity matrix. And there's an implicit summation over a mu, and this should be v nu. Okay, so where the matrix delta is uh, the Kronecker delta, I should have mentioned this earlier, which means that delta nu mu is 1 if nu is equal to mu, and 0 if nu is not equal to mu. So if these indices are different, uh, this is zero. Okay, uh, so this is why we'd want delta to have one upper and one lower index. So let's go ahead and raise the index on delta, the first index on delta. And now by a rule of requiring the matching of raised and lower indices on the left and right hand sides, we want to raise the index of G inverse as well. So we would have G inverse mu g alpha nu is delta mu nu there's a summation over um, not k but we replaced k by alpha okay and now if we want to drop this implicit summation we should actually raise the index alpha okay so the index alpha should be raised so that now we have a repeated upper and lower index and we can drop the implicit summation so when we do this now uh, we find that g inverse has both upper indices okay so uh, summarizing a few things lambda the transformation matrix lambda has an upper index and a lower index like this vectors have an upper index like this the matrix lambda transpose has uh, a lower index here and an upper index here the metric g has two lowered indices and the metric g inverse has two raised indices Okay, and whenever we write down an equation, the upper indices on the left side should match uh, the free upper indices, that is the uh, indices which are not summed over on the left side of an equation, should match the free indices on the right side of an equation. Okay, and uh, free upper indices, and the same should be true for the lower indices.